Hello and welcome. COVID-19 apart from infecting and killing people also has the potential to polarize and generate a political debate. While well, the surge of cases in, of COVID in Kerala has done just that as the last few days have shown us. Well, is the testing high in Kerala and hence more cases are surfacing? Or is the low zero prevalence, which means the low infection in the community, leaving Keralaites susceptible? Is this politics a campaign against Kerala or failure of the Kerala model? We tell you all about that, what's really happening in God's own country and how is the state of Kerala really handling the COVID crisis up ahead on the show. I'm Sneha Mordani, this is COVID-360. First up, considered to have the best healthcare system in the country, but Kerala now is failing to live up to its expectations. Here is a report on the reasons why cases are surging in the state as per the central government's assessment. Well, a team of experts from the centre are already in Kerala looking at the situation. The state once touted for controlling COVID effectively, keeping deaths at a low and sending healthy people back home is now in the news for all the wrong reasons. Kerala now accounts for 50% of COVID-19 cases in India. If you see that in the country, whether the cases are in a concentrated manner, but now in the country, there are 22 such cases where in the past four weeks, we have noted an increasing trend in cases. हमने आपको दर्शाया है स्टेट वाइज ऐसे कौन से जिले हैं जहां पर कि वीक ऑन वीक बेसिस पर अगर हम देखें तो पिछले चार हफ्तों में केसेस में संख्या में वृद्धि हुई है यह वृद्धि एक मान लीजिए कि लिमिटेड नंबर ऑफ केसेस से थोड़ी भी वृद्धि है तो यह कॉज ऑफ कंसर्न है जिसके लिए हम स्टेट से डिस्कस करते रहते हैं अ ड्रास्टिक इंक्रीज ऑफ केसेस हैज बीन सीन इन द लास्ट 4 वीक्स Documents accessed by India Today show Kotayam has seen almost 64% increase in cases in a month. Malapuram has seen a 59% jump in cases. Thrissur recorded a 45.4% rise during the same period. And Ernakulam has seen a 46.5% increase. India Today has accessed this letter that has been written by Union Health Secretary Rajesh Bhushan to the Kerala government talking about the fact that the central team that visited Kerala in the first week of July has made some observations about what really is going wrong in the state. Containment has to be improved in the state of Kerala. This letter also talks about the fact that certain super spreader events have been witnessed in the state of Kerala which has clearly led to the spike. In his letter, the Union Health Secretary says Kerala needs to do more in terms of containment. Home isolation cases, currently accounting for 95% of the active cases in the state, need to be done as per the guidelines of the Union Health Ministry. Bhushan also points out that between July 10 and 19, Kerala has seen a spike of 91,617 cases and 775 deaths. The centre says ramping up vaccination and reducing wastage is needed. Higher test positivity of 10.5% may require more stringent measures and restrictions. The centre says another problem in Kerala is non-adherence to COVID-appropriate behaviour among migrant workers. It says some positive patients have refused to get admitted to isolation centres and they need counselling. The centre has already sent a team to Kerala to review the situation in the first week of July. A team is being sent again. With Sneha Modani, Bureau Report, India Today. What really went wrong in Kerala? The state says there is a campaign against it. But the state has been in news for the wrong reasons, even inviting flag from the Supreme Court. Here's what's happened. Kerala has been struggling to control the COVID spread in the state and for many weeks, cases have been above the 10,000 mark. And yet the Kerala government decided to open markets for three days before Bakreed to allow revelers to shop for the festival. Other decisions like easing of curbs at the Shabrimala shrine and allowing 5,000 devotees also led to criticism. And this is why perhaps the state is seeing a spike in cases now. The state reported 12,868 cases on July 1st, with the test positivity rate standing at 
and now the state has witnessed the cases rising to over 22,000 cases and over 12,000 test positivity rate. The decision to ease restrictions in mid-July at a time when the state was already witnessing an average of 15,000 cases was met with severe criticism. The Indian Medical Association asked the administration not to allow mass gatherings on the occasion of Eid, terming it unwarranted and inappropriate. The Supreme Court slammed the Pindarai Vijayan government, calling the situation a sorry state of affairs. The top court of the country had threatened it would hold the state government accountable if cases spread due to the relaxations. But the government has not conceded the easing of relaxations was the reason for the spike. We cannot keep the, keep the people uh, in their house, shutting their, uh, 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 their shops or their institutions and all. So uh, the government of Kerala is uh, vigilant in this part of the uh, in this phase of the second wave, and uh, these two three uh, weeks are very uh, crucial, and we are closely monitoring the situation. For now, the government is under intense pressure and has reacted to the spike in cases with stricter lockdown measures during the weekend. While the central government has dispatched a six-member team to the state to help contain the COVID spread. Health Minister Veena George said that Kerala's second wave has plateaued and with test positivity rate under control, there is no need to worry. The second wave started in Kerala by the middle of April and we had our maximum number of cases on May 12th. Uh, on May 12th, we had 43,000, more than 43,500 cases. And then the number of cases uh, went on decreasing and then we entered a plateau. And still we are going through that plateau, uh, old, uh, although we have an ascending trend in our state. We, uh, our TPR is almost around 10%, 11% or 12%. Uh, uh, with cases rising and Kerala now reporting over 50% of the country's cases, the focus is now on how the Vijayan government tackles this worrying surge. Well, of the 22 districts in the country of concern showing a constant increase in cases, there are seven such districts in the state of Kerala. Let's take a look at what's really going on as far as these districts concerned. In Kotayam, for example, in the last four weeks, there has been a 63.6% increase in cases. This, of course, is data from the end of June to the end of July. That's the calculation of a month or so. Apart from that, in Malapuram, the increase is 59%. In the same period where towards the end of June, the cases were about 1,400 and towards the end of July, it turned into 2,270 odd cases. Then there is Ernakulam where the change in the last four weeks is 46.5% increase. Towards the end of July, 1,100 cases, it has increased to 1,700 cases towards the end of uh, July. In fact, in Trishur, we have a change in the last four weeks for 45.4%. Towards the end of June, it was about 1,300 cases and that has increased to almost 1,900 cases towards the end of July. Another district of concern is Wynard with a change in the last four weeks. The increase per se has been 37%. End of June, 284 cases. End of July, 389 cases. Then we have Patamanathitta where towards the end of June the increase uh, that has been seen is from 372 cases towards the end of June to 455 cases. Towards the end of July the change has been 22% or so. In Alapura for example the change has been 21.7%. Uh, towards the end of June, this district had about 700 cases that has gone up to about 858 cases. So these, in fact, are the districts of concern as far as Kerala is concerned. How do the cases and numbers in Kerala stand as compared to the national average? Let's take a look at the data which is available from Kerala comparison with India overall. COVID tests per lakh in Kerala is 76,110. India at a national average is 34,784. Apart from that, COVID cases per lakh in Kerala, worrying, 
9,472. Overall in the country, it's at 2,365. Test positivity rate in Kerala is extremely worrying. It's at 12% for the entire state. In India, at a national average, it is at 2.5%. The death rate in Kerala stands at 0.5%. The fatality rate in India overall is 1.34%. For Kerala, experts say that it is satisfactory, has managed to control its deaths. The active ratio in Kerala is 4.5%. Overall, India is 1.3%. Well, the surge in Kerala has led to concerns of containment efforts in the state. The centre says it is poor, but it is part of a political war of words as well. As our next report shows, the politicking that is happening over the surge in cases in Kerala. Kerala's horrifying COVID spike. Over 50% of India's daily COVID cases. Over 22,000 cases in a single day. Test positivity rate over 12%. 1.5 lakh active cases. A worrying COVID spike in Kerala breaking all records. God's own country contributing over 50% of India's daily COVID numbers. The state recorded over 22,000 fresh cases on Tuesday and an alarming test positivity rate at 12.35%. It now has nearly 1.5 lakh active cases out of nearly 4 lakh in India, triggering fears that the third wave may be already underway in the state. Kerala may 1.2 ke aspas chala hua. Again it shows that virus replication is going on, chains of transmission are going on. If you want to prevent infection in Kerala, the only way out is extensive vaccination, massive vaccination to, and you have to save maybe additional, an additional 25% of people from vaccination rather than infection. The fresh spike comes after Supreme Court didn't stop state government's three-day relaxations in COVID curves during Bakri Eid, saying the horse had already bolted. The BJP blamed Vijayan government's Bakri Eid appeasement for the COVID surge and slammed past narratives maligning Kumbh and Kavar Yatra. Tushtikaran ki rajniti jiti aur Supreme Court ke is hidayat ko Keral ki sarkar ne palan nahi kiya. Natija, 22,000 case aaj Keral ke andar aaye hain. How to prevent third wave? Is par poore desh mein charcha ho rahi hai aur ye chinta ka vishay hai. SMA, what is the carelessness of the Kerala government that we see such kind of case load rise? Kerala had also relaxed the number of pilgrims for Sabre Mala Shrine. Yesterday, Kerala reported 22,129 fresh COVID-19 cases, taking the overall active case load beyond 1,45,000. So that actually is a significant number. And there are a lot of questions raised against the Kerala model, which was hailed at one point of time during the COVID-19 crisis. To make matters worse, the state is witnessing a crippling crunch of vaccines. Crowds seeking vaccines are being turned away from jab centers. The, the zero prevalence study shows that uh, the number of uh, people infected or uh, uh, the number of people who has antibody in their body is uh, 42 percent. It, it, it means that more than 50 percent of the total population is unaffected. People of Kerala, they are coming forward to get vaccinated, but the thing is that we don't have vaccine. The opposition has accused the state government of abandoning the COVID fight. The day before yesterday, the government um, distributed 4.5 lakhs after this information was uh, released. Yeah. Now, government is saying that no vaccine is available from the government. Is the so-called Kerala model of COVID fight failing miserably? Once acclaimed for its fight against the pandemic, Kerala has now come under fire over the rise in COVID numbers. While the Congress-led opposition demands more transparency from the state government. The BJP has given a political color to this whole scenario. The state expert committee, however, believes that the situation remains under control 
as the proportion of people who are getting hospitalized are much less as compared to the peak of the second wave. With camera person Tinku Rajshagran, Gopi Krishnan Tiruvanthapuram for India Today. Well, it's time for a quick commercial break here. Much more news on the other side. Well, joining me now, Professor Rijo John. He's a health economist based out of Kerala. Professor Gautam Menon, Professor of Physics and Biology at Ashoka University, is also with us. Thank you both for your time here. Uh, I want to begin by asking you, Professor Rijo, uh, a zero survey that has been done, the fourth one in fact by the ISCMR, seems to be suggesting that as far as the state of Kerala is concerned, there is the least amount of underreporting in this particular state along with Maharashtra. What are your comments on the findings of that particular zero survey? Yes, uh, Sneha, thank you for having me on your show. Uh, what you said is right. Um, the zero survey clearly shows that, you know, Kerala's zero prevalence is only 44.4% compared to the national average of 67%. And, you know, how we uh, uh, estimate this undercounting factor is, you know, you look at the days, uh, date on which this survey was concluded, and you can actually see, uh, you know, the actual reported cases by each of these states, uh, the 21 states in which this survey was conducted. Mm -hmm. So based on the zero prevalence at that time, you can actually have an estimate of what should have been the actual uh, number of cases that could, should have been reported by these states. And then you compare that with the actual reported cases. And you can actually see when you do that exercise for 21 states, you can see that Kerala was able to through through its testing and tracing and tracking, you know, it was, the state was able to record one in every six expected cases versus, you know, states like Bihar and Uttar Pradesh, which were, uh, Bihar, for example, was the worst in, in the sense that, you know, it was able to detect through its testing only one out of 134 cases that was expected to have happened on that day. Mm -hmm. And it was 100 for UP and, and a, a wide range for other states even at all, overall at India level, uh, one in every 33 cases was only been identified okay. as on the date of conclusion of this zero survey. Mm -hmm. So it's clear that uh, the kind of uh, a smart st testing strategy or the tracing and tracking or you know, more targeted testing that Kerala was able to do and even to an extent Maharashtra was uh, must ma made it possible for these states to you know, detect more cases for each expected case. Okay, also. but you know, Professor Menon, uh, the zero survey by itself is not extremely, you know, representative in nature. It just has about 70 districts of the more than 700 that we have in the country. This sort of an expo extrapolation then to say that Kerala is detecting better or Maharashtra is detecting better. Is there some sort of a flaw in the method? No, these zero surveys are based on well-founded statistical methods, mm. and the, the survey, the zero survey, has a coverage of about 21 states. But as you mentioned, out 70 districts in 21 states, mm. and compared out of the 740, so there certainly are districts about which we don't have enough information. But if chosen correctly, the mix of rural and urban districts in this mix of 70 districts that were studied should be fairly representative. It doesn't help us make very local very specific suggestions for what should be policy in one district mm. versus the other unless we have that information but it certainly should be broadly representative of what's happening in india all right now talking about kerala a lot of conversation online offline about this flawed kerala model that everybody is talking about uh, professor menon you think it is extremely unfair given the fact that the state is testing more detecting cases better and most importantly keeping the fatality rate low Yes, that's right. And the question is, what do you think, how do you define success in epidemiological terms when you deal with a disease like this? So let me list a couple of points for you. First of all, Kerala has the smallest fraction of people infected of any state. It has a seropositivity lower than any other state. Yeah. So that suggests that it has managed to control the disease fairly well. It has, along with that, it has had a speedy progress of vaccinations. Over 20% of its population is fully vaccinated. And close to 40% has at least received a single jab. That's again a positive. 
you have, as you pointed out, the fewest fraction of people dying as a result of the disease. The case fatality ratio is about 0.5, as opposed to 1.3 nationally. Mm -hmm. It's testing well. It's testing well above similar states at 150,000 per day to 190,000 per day. Its health infrastructure has not been overburdened, and that's very important. It's finally it's producing relatively trustworthy data for public policy measures. That's, again, something significant in terms of being able to suggest to the government what it should do and what it should not do. And by and large, the measures taken by the government have been adhered to. So all of these are positive from the point of view of epidemiology, from the point of view of public policy. So I can't see why anyone would think of Kerala as a failure. You know, uh, Professor Rijo John, do you at one point agree with the central government? I say the central government because the Union Health Secretary has written a letter, letter to the Kerala government saying that there were super spreader events, you know, things that could have been avoided. The Supreme Court has pulled up Kerala. What was the need to open up for each festivities? Do you think that that is one mistake that Kerala could have avoided? Well, you know, I'm, I've, as a matter of fact, uh, I uh, was one of those persons who actually uh, criticized the state of the state government at that time when it uh, decided to relax the uh, three days during the Eid celebration, relax the lockdown restriction on for that three days. Okay. But, you know, uh, at the same time, I must also want to say that, you know, uh, if somebody suggests that the recent surge in cases is exclusively due to uh, Eid relaxation, I would not agree with that, simply because Kerala had seen the current reversal of cases, meaning uh, start uh, rising of these cases right now that we are witnessing from Kerala has actually started from uh, June 24th itself, whereas the Eid was on July 21st, almost a month later. Okay. So it was a continuation of the trend. Uh, of course, the relaxation during the Eid may have contributed to, you know, uh, increasing the pace of it a little bit, but that alone uh, is not going to be blamed for the current cases. It has, to, it has got to do with the fact that there is increased mobility on the one hand and also the fact that Kerala has a much larger proportion of its population that is still susceptible to the virus, almost 50% of the population, which is much higher than anywhere else in the country. Yes. So um, in a sense, Kerala is actually doing a catching up game with the rest of the country. Yes, uh, I understand. Professor Menon, you know, the center says that these are sources that we talk to during, you know, Mina conversations with, uh, you know, those in the Union Health Ministry. They have said that right now what Kerala is doing is that they're not containing the infection much, as much as they should be doing. Uh, there should be many more restrictions, of course, that has changed with the announcement of a lockdown. But should that have come in earlier, in your opinion? Well, we could always say they should have done mm. things earlier. That's certainly true. And I think I agree with uh, Dr. Joe John that certainly the relaxations around Eid, relaxations a little earlier around mm. political activity for local body elections, all of these should have been done more in a more careful manner. Okay. I hope in the oncoming Onam festivities will be much more toned down and much more reduced given the background of the pandemic in Kerala. So I think this is a time for caution on the part of the Kerala government. They should use closures, lockdowns very carefully and selectively, depending depending upon what the test positivity rate is in, in, different, in different locations. All right. And, if, and it's very important to reduce the number of cases because the more cases there are, the more opportunity for spread. So tra test, track and isolate is very important at this point. All right. Uh, last word to Professor Rijuan. What do you think should be the way forward for Kerala from here on? Well, um, as Professor Menon rightly pointed out, I would, I would think that, you know, uh, uh, more rationalized uh, policy on its lockdown you know the, currently the government has this policy of uh, you know alternative days certain shops are allowed to open and alternative days they remain closed etc so these kind of uh, I, I think those are slightly irrational in nature which is which are leading to more crowding during the days when these establishments are open mm -hmm. uh, and the select lockdowns only on weekends etc i'm not a big fan of those so the whole idea, as Professor Menon pointed out, should be to, you know, decrease the crowding as much as possible, whatever it takes, you know. Mm -hmm. So that is an area that the government needs to improve on. And on top of that, I would also like the government to be more transparent about uh, its reporting of deaths across all okay. the districts. I see that there are some inconsistencies in uh, death reporting from different districts when you look at the district data carefully. So that is also an area that needs improvement at sure. the moment um yeah uh, i guess that that's it from me for now yeah all right
that in fact is one of the suggestions of the Union Health Ministry as well as far as that letter of the Union Health Secretary is concerned that count your debts right and do it as per the protocol of the Ministry of Health. Thank you, Professor John. Thank you, Professor Menon, for joining us and sharing your perspective with us on that important story from Kerala. Well, that is it. We could pack in in this edition of COVID-360. Hope you enjoyed the show. You can also log on to our website, which is indiatoday.in. And you can also download the app for more on that. Until next time, stay safe, be well, and do get a shot against COVID-19 if you haven't already. Thanks for watching.